Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Perfect. Sorry, I was going to come over and drool. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, we got all yeah. kinds so what, of stuff on it. Yeah, tell us how you guys usually do what you do here. You film something every day? So, uh, yeah, well, kind of. Um, we're normally about five days a week. We'll take one day of just reviewing mm -hmm. and one day of, like, prepping so mm -hmm. getting all of our notes down making sure we don't say anything wrong mm -hmm. uh verifying sources that mm -hmm. kind of stuff what and then the okay. crazy talk yeah. Well, yeah what kind of craziness is that you just make stuff up yeah, so, and some, then you just defend your time, position a lot of the time <laughs> make it true <laughs> but no we uh so nothing scripted um right. okay. we just kind of talk about it and then put a bunch of info in the brain and then do it yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I understand. a lot of the stuff like we already we already, we're, we're building off a knowledge we already know, because, you know, Steve and I, we're already gunsmiths. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just taking that knowledge, building on it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for the different myths and things like that, if it's something we don't know, we learn it. Mm -hmm. Use that to reinforce our knowledge and then just get up there and talk yeah. about it. Yeah, we reach sense. out to a lot of people yeah, mm -hmm. like all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah, like the Galvanic Reaction, we reached out to Bill Geisley and mm -hmm. stuff yeah. like that. So. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty, it's pretty great. We used to go everything scripted like when brown owl started mm -hmm. they were like everything just needs to be on the nose mm -hmm. and you know we're strictly mm -hmm. a business to business company mm -hmm. at that point and then it just is so canned and rehearsed mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you didn't get you know i always find myself looking at something but randomly so something will come up and then i'm searching youtube but you might have covered it in the smith busters and i'm like oh i'll just look at that <laughs> No, see really. what these guys have to say about it. So I think, you know, like the business to business idea. So that's what the folks in the store or looking at that or a lot of times uh, when we started the studio, like mm -hmm. nearly 14 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, it was mainly for people in shops mm -hmm. or people that considered themselves like a gunsmith mm -hmm. or okay. had an at home kind of thing. It was mm -hmm. very technical, very mm -hmm. long form, step mm -hmm. by step. And we kind of approached it like, you need to fix your washing machine. We need to take you mm -hmm. step by step through it and mm -hmm. take that process through the gun world. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of it now is we're we're all doing it at home. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and so how? And, but do we, we don't we don't know everything. <laughs> you, exactly. Yeah. And how how do you not blow yourself up or make right. something dangerous? And mm -hmm. then there's so much crap out on uh, the internet mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. just want to dispel myths. Mm -hmm. So people don't, you know, yeah. I mean, well, it's like the steak or don't steak, right? I think you yeah. guys covered yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's that kind of a thing. Like I never do that. Yeah. And like, I'm the advocate for it. And Steve was like, ah, I never do no, it. No, I yeah. never do. Well, I never do it because I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to take this thing apart at some point. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But well, there's I'm, people who will scream on you for that. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. this is, you missed a safety. Like you didn't put on your seatbelt. Yeah. Well, and I mean, yeah. if you're going to be using it for like, a duty weapon mm -hmm. or something like that then yes yeah. stake it if mm -hmm. not then it, honestly it doesn't really matter so yeah right i i have one staked and mm -hmm. i kind of wish staked. i uh mm -hmm. didn't because like then i have to bring it in and these guys have to fix it you know yeah. but uh well yeah. that's like the question of if you go training i know this specific trainers who say don't come out here training with a rifle that you built you know be, for for some of these reasons and it makes sense to me right. typically i'll just take like uh, like my SIG or something like that, that they built and they put it together and I never really mess with it, I'll just take that, sure. you know? But there are people who know how to build their thing correctly right. and, they, and they've tested it and whatever. Yeah. But I kind of, I always separate me building and messing around stuff from that kind of serious thing. Because if, you, if your gun's no good in the class and you keep stopping and they have to talk right. to you and figure it out or find another one, then you just messed up class for other people right well, so we talk about that a little bit with like a home defense or a personal protection firearm mm -hmm. you know there are certain things that you can upgrade on that mm -hmm. but fundamentally you you i mm -hmm. mean you it's really popular want... to have a factory yeah level gun some yeah. people change sights yeah uh you know and things yeah. like that but it doesn't the firing mechanism is not mm -hmm. all yeah different. i don't well, whatever i carry i don't change anything yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. So, yeah. So, uh, but 
taking on some of that stuff mm -hmm. um, on the Smith Busters or Quick Tips, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, we found that's kind of becoming mm -hmm. the bread and butter. Mm -hmm. We still have big long form tech tip stuff mm -hmm. and uh, like we we're maybe going to do some stuff on night vision coming okay. up. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. You know, just because there's so many myths and there's so much like. I don't know the difference between like a level one and a level mm -hmm. three. and I just know there's a lot of money involved, so I'm yeah. going to do a lot it's of a, research. It's a, yeah. <laughs> it's a gap in my knowledge. I yeah, need me to too. Fill, so. yeah. 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 We had that with suppressors like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, there's only a handful of suppressors on the market, quality mm -hmm. suppressors mm -hmm. on the market, and trying to understand like what information you need versus what mm -hmm. information you yeah. know you don't need. Um, yeah. I think that's still relative too because there's people you don't, Suppressors are one of those things like you get in first, you buy a handgun, you know, right. And then maybe you get a rifle, then you, maybe you start building things and messing around with modifying it or whatever. And it takes some time before you get to suppressors, mostly yeah. because you're thinking oh, that's expensive. I've got to buy it and then wait. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so. I think uh, I think there's a lot of that and there's a lot of like little stuff that people don't feel comfortable doing that mm -hmm. maybe we could show them, mm -hmm. you know, this isn't that hard mm -hmm. you know you can build an ar on your kitchen table mm -hmm. you could do a poly 80 with nothing except mm -hmm. for a hand drill you mm -hmm. know uh if you get a barreled action for a 700 platform mm -hmm. like you need a screwdriver mm -hmm. or an allen wrench you know yeah. you don't really need to do too need much yeah and so like we're advocates of that mm -hmm. and uh like trying to empower that shooter not just to get to the range and mm -hmm. pull the trigger but to be able to be creative and mm -hmm. and take that gun to the next level if you want to mm -hmm. and and feeling comfortable with it yeah i wish lola would let me show people like i build stuff literally on the living room floor mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> i mean yeah i have i have a place to do it i've got tools i've got everything i do it on the living room floor youtube on <laughs> that's right yeah I, and i think the majority of people are like that you know right. whether it's a kitchen table or the countertop mm -hmm. or the living room floor mm -hmm. i mean not everybody has a workshop i have two three-year-olds mm -hmm. and if i did it on the living room floor i'd never find parts and pieces because right. uh but uh yeah. you know caleb i mean you build stuff you have there, stuff all over the well, house there's been times yeah. where because i have a a, a pretty good workbench set up mm -hmm. in my house and there's been times where i'm like i, I don't want to walk to it right it's, <laughs> thank can, you caleb i'll just do it right here yeah it's tough so, just you know like taking care of this kind of hair mm -hmm. yeah it that takes you know, a lot out of you it does People you know don't it's realize. like it, yeah. you know it's, you know i have plenty of, i woke up like this so right. i have all this extra energy and you know yeah roy you should be in here man we're talking here well, right we're talking now here. this okay. is like the best oh, hair in the business right, lots, best but, hair in the business but see, see i have the unkempt like shaggy wild yeah. man of the woods thing yeah flowing yes. uh, the yeah. streaks of gold it's the matthew mcconaughey right. and george clooney right, right. 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 so yeah. we, we have we have we have sculpted perfection here and then yeah. we have impressive architecture yeah this is yeah this and is rough mine's just all natural there's yeah. i mean there's no uh there's not much hand of man at work yeah. here so. i was feeling very self-conscious so i was telling lola that because i was just going to put on a hat i've been on the road a little while oh we've got the hat for you yeah i was going to put a hat on but then i saw lola if i put on a hat that's admitting defeat to caleb i have to like it's, somehow it's in the chair do something right there. with my hair when i go there <laughs> Oh, so, that's uh -oh. My hat. oh, that's yeah, Caleb's yeah, yeah. hat. Oh, okay. oh boy. Oh baby. See, that, I wish it fit is, me, but yeah. This is when we I found it at an estate sale. Is, right. It's like oh, an original eighteen seventies. <laughs> yeah. Mr. That's Lincoln. Dude. It's like dude. a young Lincoln there, you know. Yeah. Later on, he gets older, he gets taller, the hat gets taller. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the, the taller the hat, the closer to the Lord. I think. Yes. Oh! <laughs> like Dolly Parton. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. It's a Henry 44 Magnum lever action. Yep. Also, I just like 44 Magnum 44 special lever guns. Okay. Uh, they're just delightful. They have a pretty good thump too. But so these rifles are always here. These are these are these are always here. It's a it's a rack full of Henrys. We have a good relationship with Henry. They send them. Some. Now, two of the ones I really like are the replicas of the original 1860 this is a higher grade it's got the engraved receiver check out the walnut on that stock 
and these are chambered in 44 special, 4440, 4440. The original Henry's were in 44 rimfire, which okay. nobody makes anymore. But um, 4440 is pretty close. And this is what more of the standard Model 1860 Henry would have looked like. Of course, it's a brass plate. It's not an actual brass receiver. There was no forearm. It was just a magazine tube. And it was the original multi-shot repeater. In fact, this was used in by certain Union Army units in the American, closing days of the American Civil War. So it was one of the first, if you will, rapid fire repeating military rifles in the American history and it's from 1860. See. Yep. I know history is your thing. Uh, it's one of my things, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and then we have various uh, rimfire 22s. Oh, well, Henry makes really beautiful They make beautiful guns. And this is a little, little Henry pump. I mean, people know pump shotguns. Here's a little pump 22 rifle. These are just a heck of a lot of fun. We have 16 stops of latitude. Now, this Armalite is not a built one. This came like this. Yes, this is. An oh, Armalite AR. Of, it's just the optic, I take it. Right. That's an IO, IOR Valdata, made in Romania scope. And this is a bolt action 50 BMG. We've had this at the range frequently in the past. Uh, distance shooting? Yes, 500 yards is our maximum range. At the, okay. And this shark break, it calms the recoil down that you can handle it, but the blast coming out at the angle, you can see the vent, the mm -hmm. vents here. Mm -hmm. you, Whenever somebody's shooting this gun, you don't want to be off to the side. You want to be directly behind the shooter because yep. otherwise it'll rattle your feelings loose. Yep. We learned that lesson last time you were at the range. Yes, right. yes, yes, we did. I remember that. Yes, yes. How much does that weigh? Oh, 20, 30? at least 30 something, probably. Yeah. I mean, you can Google the specs for an AR 50 from Armalite, but uh, uh, it's, it's no joke. Yeah. 34 pounds. 34 pounds. 34 pounds. These, like, I'm just so impressed with these cameras. And there's just no telling. I mean, these are all but pieces, parts for video. For They'll have all sorts of product in here for video purposes. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's great. uppers. Mm -hmm. There's and furniture. You know, there's hand like, guards. You know, we're everything you could company. imagine. Right. Like, we need to put out a product. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. We're sitting in a studio here. We're actually in Montezuma, Iowa. At Brownells, we're joined by Caleb here. Uh, what is it, Baron von Savant? Baron von Savant. On Instagram, uh, and what's your title, man? Whenever I know Lola was, Lola and I were talking about this because when you sent me an email and the title is long, yeah. it's like gunsmith, expert, knower of all things. No, well, uh, I would have to go look at my email to see what my title is. <laughs> oh wait, is. I could pull it up. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You tell us, gunsmith, gun take, gun guru. So, yeah, there was a lot of those in there, Caleb. The, no, th this isn't like a self-proclaimed title. These are things that Brownells kind of put on me. This uh, isn't, oh. I didn't make this up. This oh, is, oh, okay. This is, you, you let me know when, because. Mm. Yeah, so here it goes, Caleb. Caleb, Baron Von Savant, gunsmith slash gun tech, smith buster slash gun guru. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, yeah. that's me. That's a lot of things. That's, I'm, I'm a lot of person I don't, I don't know <laughs> there's a lot of awesomeness there's a lot of yeah <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot in a small you know package i don't know uh, what to tell you it's <laughs> i'm not gonna go there 165 pounds <laughs> i'm not gonna go there pure yeah title overflow so you guys have to look forward to a video that we've actually just we just wrapped on we did here with caleb and um i think i think it's cool you guys will enjoy it look out for that but I really do appreciate you inviting me over here to do some stuff with you guys. I've never been here. I, uh, it's, it's fun to see the history. Roy's here with us as well. You know, Lola's there on the camera. It's fun to, like, talk about the history of Brownells. How long have you been working with Brownells? I kind of just hit my three-year mark in May, I, I believe it Three was. years? Okay. Yeah. So explain to the folks what you guys are doing here with the studio and all this what's the what's the mission behind it what's the purpose of you know you got you guys have a nice setup yeah so you, know, you got a, a you know producer everything man yeah yeah so the studio you know we do a lot of stuff for a mm -hmm. lot of other companies um, but as far as like my, my role in the studio mm -hmm. you know I'm I've, I've been a gunsmith for 10 years professional gunsmith I've been gunsmithing um, 
for a while here before I came to Brown Nails. Mm-hmm. And my goal and what I do in the studio is, you know, behind the camera, of course, I'm the professional gunsmith. But at the same time, what I try to do is empower the everyday, you know, user, the everyday builder, not just the gunsmiths. We do plenty of stuff for gunsmiths as well. Mm-hmm. But the home builder and, and to take them and empower them and show them that, you know, they can do a lot of this stuff as well. Okay. And so they can do it themselves. They can do it themselves, okay. especially when it comes to, you know, the AR-15s, the Polymer 80 stuffs. That's not just for, you know, the gunsmiths on the gun bench. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of stuff that you can do yourself at home. Yeah. So if you can't get out and get down to your local gun store, mm-hmm. you can just get online and talk to Baron Von Savant. Yeah. So, <laughs> Brownells didn't put this. So, uh, oh, okay. That, that title actually. So all the other titles, you know, the, those are those are Brownells titles. But okay. That, that title actually came from our um, our studio supervisor. Uh huh. Who was that? That uh, Matt Matt Peak. Okay. Over there. Wait. Oh, so he he doth you, Baron von Savant. He, he doth me, Baron von Savant. <laughs> what was the pedigree, Matt? So Matt, yeah, where did this come from? So. uh... Caleb came in, no social media mm-hmm. or anything like that. Wait, hold on a second. This guy had no social media. No, well, did he come some... in looking like this, or did you guys create this? I can't Is this a brown elf well, product? I mean, this hair. He was still a like a skinny guy with mm-hmm. hair, but uh, like mm-hmm. we we had. I we brought like, Kate. Let, let me just start. Okay. okay. <laughs> we uh, it's like a married couple. <laughs> it's kind of like I was that. Yeah. Never gunsmith. Uh, uh-huh. uh, Caleb came in and did a video for us. Uh, it was. The big baller shootout, and it was basically like this funny thing about old gunsmiths versus new gunsmiths. Mm-hmm. And we brought him in, and he did really well. And then so we started bringing him on to do videos. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, do something for yourself and and start doing some social media because people were reaching out. You know, Steve, our uh, video talent, didn't have social media, and it's like. We can reach a whole lot more people, and we can interact way more. Absolutely. Um, and so we got Caleb on Instagram, and Caleb is a huge fan of World War One and pre World War One aircraft. Okay. And uh, he was telling me all about this movie he loves called uh, The Red Baron. We were talking oh, about okay. the Red Baron. We were yeah. talking about. I came in and I was Not talking the Snoo- about. Is this the Snoopy version? No, or? it's oh. the real like the the Manfred okay. von Richthofen. Like okay, the, yeah, the I've actual seen it. Red yeah. Baron. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, you know, yeah. I was just talking about the Red mm-hmm. Baron one day, and then... I go, you need a name. We, we need to give you a name. And mm-hmm. Because he had all these ultra egos. We had Slick, who was the guy in the video, who was mm-hmm. kind of like this arrogant jerk. Mm-hmm. And then when Caleb doesn't do his hair, he wears a backwards hat and sweatpants. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the knee-high white Nike socks with the slides? Like, that's Caleb when he doesn't slides. get his hair done. Oh, and, okay. <laughs> and we called him Robbie. And he drinks bush light, and he's like the cousin that yeah. you you don't want. And yeah, then I was this like, "This is all like dissolving my fantasy yeah. of who Caleb actually is." Well, so we created this, this persona. This is real me, Hank. Oh, okay. <laughs> me. That's who he is now, yeah. right? Okay. Uh, but uh, he said that, and I go, "Oh, we we need to call you the Baron." And uh, he goes, "Baron Savant," and I go, "No, Baron Von Savant." Ah, it just nice. You're. We're uh, yeah, mixing <laughs> genres, and then it literally like started taking shape. Mm-hmm. And uh, Caleb actually is now no longer a full time gun tech here at Brownells. He's our full time video talent. Awesome, man! Congratulations on that. Thank you. You actually have a dream job for I, a lot of people. I, I, I do. You realize that, right? I realize that, and yeah. I am very thankful for it. Yeah, I talk to a lot of stoked. folks who want to be gunsmiths, who are gunsmiths, people that want to do what I'm doing, for example. And it's an awesome thing, I think, working for Brownells is like the dream right there. It is. Yeah, how good do they treat you? So good. Yeah, like do yeah. They, do people throw out like rose petals and stuff like that? I, uh, hey, uh-huh. I need a, or I need bullets. a refill. <laughs> bullets, they throw out bullets. Refill on the, floor. On the coffee. Oh, yeah, oh, Let's here go. we go. Oh. Right away, Barry. Right away. Right away. Right away. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, Roy knows oh. his place. <laughs> <laughs> no. K- Caleb uh, is the first person in uh, 80 plus years of Brownells mm-hmm. to become full time talent. And so, what that kind of includes, not that you need all this information, but mm-hmm. we do r- all the research on what topics we need to cover, what's being asked on the phone, on the tech line, mm-hmm. and then also it's being asked on 
forums and our website and our Facebook and yeah. Well, I think you guys. Okay, it's, it's great. Thanks. It better be. It better be. <laughs> but but yeah. also it's doing that coming across casually on mm -hmm. camera, also to the young and old people that you know our customer base is. You know, we used to say uh, twenty five to death. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's kind of where we live. And so Caleb brings a, a younger aspect to that, mm -hmm. but also brings a lot of knowledge. He's a bona fide war hero. He was blown up multiple times in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Purple Heart Award recipient. Oh, really? Not a and, hero, though. And, uh, that part up. But, uh, so he brings that knowledge, plus mm -hmm. he's done all kinds of gunsmithing, from, from Glocks to uh, flood restoration of classic firearms after Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, we've got to talk to you about this on the podcast. Yeah. So this, he's not just making up stuff, right? No, well, I, I mean, there's not a whole lot of knowledge to be gained from being blown up a few times. <laughs> oh, yes, there is. But I've, I've done Don't that. get blown up. Don't ride with Caleb in a car. <laughs> Don't ride, yeah, ride, yeah. ride in another vehicle is the yeah. knowledge to be had. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that, that's, the, that's all the truth. No, that's cool. I don't think Brownells would just lightly choose someone to do this, especially for the first time. You know, yeah. you're going, you're going to be in the Brownells Museum at some point. In 2250, someone's going to be walking, well, probably floating through, you know, the, the Brownells Museum, and there's going to be Caleb, so. My frozen head? Yeah. Well, 20, <laughs> in a jar, in a, in jar, a jar, you'll be still talking. <laughs> like the movie Mars Attack. Yeah. 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 Next, so let's talk about the videos that you make, yeah. the concept behind the videos, yeah. or how it started, oh, yeah. and, you know, how so, it's grown. So in 07, 08, uh, Brownells decided to bring all their communications and uh, advertising in-house mm -hmm. for a couple reasons when you're in the firearms industry you want to get it right yeah you know um, and secondly you want to be able to do it when you want to do it mm -hmm. and so they brought me and one other person in uh, and I was on the photo side and um, we helped each other out we shared a studio and then in about 2011 I took over uh, the photo and video side mm -hmm. and built these studios which are fantastic Brownells mm -hmm. really decided they've always been the content mm -hmm. business Bob Brownell our founder used to write articles for a myriad of magazines yeah. and um, I mean at one time Brownells was like the sales catalog for the gun world I mean I think it still is you yeah guys are still making a catalog our big book that comes out once a year yeah. is kind of that mm -hmm. well what we wanted to do is we wanted to when online sales were going, you know, we didn't have a retail space. We mm. wanted to be able to give as much content to um, the customer as we p potentially could. Mm -hmm. So multiple images showing from every angle. We, on the video side, it was more about how do we provide the needed content to the individual um, as fast as we can and give it to them in a way. Uh, some people like to say, I want to do something, but I don't want to blow myself up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you're dealing with, you know, firearms and yeah, gunpowder and, stuff, and yeah. yeah, so yeah. you have to be safe. So how do we do that? So we partnered with the gun tech staff, which we have a huge gun tech staff. Um, and we started doing videos and we started doing these long form videos. Well, about a handful of years ago, we started doing stuff a little bit off the cuff, making things more conversational and also empowering that end user which is not necessarily the gunsmith but the guy that's sitting at his kitchen table or his living room floor to be able to be successful and to feel comfortable because they have knowledge and learned people mm -hmm. telling them how to do that yeah. so we provide that content we provide the parts and then we provide that gunsmith call line to be able to support whatever we're doing. So we all kind of work in tandem mm -hmm. in order to do that. We also do advertising and uh, commercial photography and we've built a lot of studios in the industry or helped um, companies. Other people to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. because it's not about just the firearms world. Um, like we're all on the same team. Absolutely. If, if I can help you, and you can help me and we can work together, then we're all ahead. And that's the way Brownells really feels about it. We're all kind of a family and we all want to share things together. 
I agree with you. <clears throat> so we're, we're, you know, we're all kind of competing in some ways, I guess, but we're really not competing. You know, a lot right. of times we're on an island and there's so many things that we're all dealing with and so many people surrounding that island that are always trying to take us out that really we'll, we'll survive if we help each other and work with each other. Exactly, and the industry becomes stronger if that does mm -hmm. happen. So really that's what our goal is here in the studio is to provide accurate and reliable content to the firearm owner or user. And if you don't own a firearm, we want you to make the responsible decision to make that choice for yourself. That is truly your choice mm -hmm. and we want to give you all the information so you can make the choice that's best for you and your family. Yeah. And. Uh, so there's a lot of people. I mean, Caleb does this. Steve Ostrom comes into the studio mm -hmm. multiple days a week. We, wherever Roy went. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? We, yeah, but uh, I look at what you guys do. I think you guys do a great job, and I look at it. And, you know, honestly, making videos and things like that, I get, you know, it's, you get burnt out. So even just looking at things. But I, to me, I actually look at what you guys are doing. You know, I'm actually consuming that. And typically it's when I'm, messing around with something and people think maybe I know everything. I don't know anything. There's a limited amount of stuff that stays in my brain and I'll go look for that information. And the funny thing about it is we actually had Pete Brownell on our podcast and he was talking about this, that when he wanted to go online, you know, um, maybe his dad <laughs> said, what do we need to go online for? No one's going to buy anything online. It's the internet thing. But today, that was then. Yeah. And today, that's the first place that we go to when we run into questions, trouble with, with something we don't understand. We go to the internet and, yeah. you know, making the videos you guys are making a big part of that. Well, and we appreciate that. And it's not lost on us because a lot of the topics that come out, mm -hmm. we're not experts on. Mm -hmm. We'll reach out. We've reached out to people like um, Bill Geisley. We've reached mm -hmm. out to a lot of AK manufacturers. You know, we've... You know, stuff that we haven't traditionally been, mm -hmm. you know, uh, not comfortable with, but we haven't had the experience with. And so we do that. When we do our From the Vaults at launch every Friday, mm -hmm. you know, we tried to dive a little bit into the history and why something was developed, mainly because we want to know it too, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's the great thing about this industry is because everybody's an everybody has an expertise mm -hmm. once you get in or an interest but you can expound that great you yeah. know uh caleb's not just an ar-15 gunsmith he's building you know uh a turn of the century mauser uh supporterized oh, cool. mauser i mean uh cool. steve ostrom can build single action handguns from scratch from mm -hmm. pieces of blank steel and we have access to everybody else in the industry so if somebody has a question we can reach out to those people where the normal person can't call up like a Bobby Tyler for a single action or a Bill Geisley for an AR or whoever that may be. Yeah, it's but, a great opportunity for you guys to be able to reach out to them and actually get an answer. Yeah, and everybody in the industry is really forthcoming with information, and yeah. that's a great thing. Yeah, so let me ask you guys, both of you, this question before we wrap it here. Where do you see the future of this going? What would you guys like to do? You know, what are you trying to build this into? Where's the future? You want me to start? Yeah, you go ahead. I really think interactivity mm -hmm. is the next step. You okay. know, right now we can put something out there and see how it responds. Mm -hmm. But I think interactivity. So the and feedback from the customers, the consumers out there. Or working with the customer live. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. uh, we do do some live streams. We oh, that do... would be amazing. So you mean someone can have a question, they're building something, and actually come in live and ask you guys about yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, I think we could do, you know, virtual whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it's a little bit difficult now, mm -hmm. uh, but it's moving there. And I think, you yeah. know, the sky's really the limit. And, but I think that next step is that interactivity really having a conversation versus just creating something. Yeah. That would be cool. What do, what do you think, Caleb? Yeah, I, so I agree with that 100%. And mm -hmm. I also think, so the whole like e-gaming mm -hmm. thing, so the, the audience for gaming is getting older and older. Mm -hmm. uh, you see a, a, an older class of people getting into games. Yes. 
Um, and with that older class of people getting into gaming, you see them, especially with shooters, like, for example, Escape from Tarkov, which is mm -hmm. one we're kind of branching into right now, mm -hmm. you see them wanting to own the guns that they own yes. in the game. So a lot of these people are first-time gun owners or potential first-time gun owners. Mm -hmm. So a big thing we want to do is help them make the educated decision, the responsible decision, whenever they're purchasing their first firearm and branching into the, the actual firearm world and taking that first step. Okay. So um, that's kind of a big direction we're, we're moving into. Okay. We're trying to, trying to move into it. Yeah. So. That sounds cool. Uh huh. I think the whole ploy is the exact same thing that we wanted to start in 1939, mm -hmm. where we wanted to educate and provide the best possible product to the customer who didn't necessarily know what they mm -hmm. needed or what they wanted. And I think we're doing the exact same thing 80 some years later, just, just different via tools. Different same, tools. Yeah. Same yeah. exact thing. So just to interject this into like the future type of stuff, I was looking at something in auto manufacturing. Um, there's a new way now that when they're putting parts of a car together, let's say, or let's say it was this this handgun, all the parts are laid out and there's actually a camera looking down and something that can project what those parts are onto the table. And then when that person is putting everything together, it goes, wait a second, you just put that in wrong. You know, you can put that, put that in. And then I was okay. looking at that, so it was literally lighting up. It would literally light up. Take, so let's say, if you can just imagine this for a second, there's a part there, or this is there, or the, or the, the magazine, let's say, and it would literally light that up and go, nope, that doesn't fit in that. It goes in this. And, and it's telling you on the screen. And the, the big difference in that is now you can put those parts together faster, but you can also have a person come, come in and assemble this whole board, let's say, without having a super amount of knowledge of what that is. Because they're learning and this, the computer can see whether or not they're doing it right and show them how to do it faster. And I think that would be an amazing thing to see when you, I thought of it when you were talking about you know, virtual stuff, and then you were talking yeah. about com computers and all that. If we can get to a point sometime where I can plug into something and I get into Brownells and someone's telling me, oh, yeah, just, you got all the parts, here's what you do, here's how you put that together and make it work. Like you said, it's the, the tools, the technology that exists today can help us do things that you would have to take so much time and make so many errors in the past and make it happen. Yep. Yeah. It's really about connecting with people at this point. Mm -hmm. And it always has been, but now we're actually being able to mm -hmm. talk to people. Yeah. And I think that's really, really the goal is how can I help you be successful? Mm -hmm. Before, you really needed a mentor to be able to do it. Yeah. Now your mentor can be across the world. Yeah. And yeah, you, you would do, uh, what was it, like, a, not a, yeah, not an internship or, like, apprenticeship. Apprenticeship, yeah. Yeah, you would have to do that. So now this is a way that someone, like you said, across the world, they could be an apprentice. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. that's amazing. All right, so I'm going to wrap this. We're going to, you know, I, I want to thank these guys so much for having us in. Matt, Caleb, Roy brought us over here. Um, we're going to go off and do other things. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, leave your comments and questions. Baron Von Savant on Instagram. Right, Matt, do you have an Instagram? Iowa Film. Iowa Film. I, Iowa Film, that's yeah. Matt. And Roy is Possum Fatback. As always. Yes, on Instagram. And Lola's Lola Strange One. There we go, I'm out of here. Peace. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.